Good morning, everyone. We're going to take a short break from the catechism this week, and we're going to talk about this new church church season we're in. We're in the season of Lent. Uh, you'll see lots of purple, and that's to remind us of two different things. The first being that uh, Jesus is royalty. He's the king of kings. He's uh, the son of God, and um, it helps us uh, realize who Jesus is. And then it also um, is a color that we kind of think of darker or mourning or being sad that somebody died. So it's to help us anticipate or get ready for the fact that Jesus came and he died on the cross for us. And we're also going to talk about the fall into sin again this week. So uh, Lent starts out with a special day called Ash Wednesday. And it's important to think about Ash Wednesday. Um, if you got one of our Lenten devotion bags, you probably got a little bottle of ash just like this. Um, this isn't quite the ash that we would put on the forehead that's mixed with something else to kind of help it stick. Um, but it is a jar of ash. Now, our theme this year for the midweek services is called return from exile. Now, exile is a word that means um, to be put out of somewhere or not be able to come back to something. And so if we think about it, we can think about the Garden of Eden, the perfect place that God put Adam and Eve. And this was a beautiful place and God gave them a command not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But they didn't listen to God. They didn't do what he said. Instead, they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And that brought sin and death into the world. And so God gave a few punishments. Um, that man would have to work the ground. That um, having kids was going to be more painful. That um, the snake was going to have to crawl on his belly. Um, and also, uh, eventually, God was going to exile them from the Garden of Eden or send them out from the Garden of Eden so they couldn't come back and eat from the Tree of Life and live forever in this painful, sinful world. But along with all of these sad things that happen, God also promised a Savior that would come and bring us back to God. So our sins are what separate us from God. They're the things that God doesn't want us to do that we do. But God promised Adam and Eve a savior that would come and restore that relationship or bring us back to God so that one day we could live with God in heaven and no longer be exiled or uh, taken away from God. We'd be able to be with God again. Now, one of the other punishments, we mentioned death, and that's where these ashes or dust comes from. So a lot of times when pastor would put the imposition of ashes on your forehead, he would say, to dust you are, and to dust you will return. That was part of the punishment that was given in the Garden of Eden. We were going to die. So when God originally made Adam, he made him very special. He formed him from the dust of the earth and then breathed into him the breath of life. So when Adam died, then his body was going to return to the dust or return to the earth. And that's what happens when we die. That's what happens to our physical bodies. But one day God will come back and make all things new and we'll have a new body that we can rejoice and be with God in heaven. So that's part of what the ashes remind us of. And ashes are also a sign of repentance. So we talk about repentance where we go and we say we're sorry for the sins that we've done. We're sorry that we were mean to our brother or our sister or our teacher, or we just didn't do something we we're supposed to. So saying we're sorry, we're genuinely sorry for something, and also being forgiven for those things is important. But another part of repentance is saying, or is not doing those things again, is uh, actively trying not to do those things with God's help. Now we look at the ashes and we can remember that in the book of Romans, which is an epistle or a letter written to the people in Rome, but also for us today, that the wages of sin is death, 
but the gift of God is eternal life. So we're going to die and our physical bodies are going to turn to dust one day. I have a picture. Um, this was the only one I was able to find and print quickly, or at least uh, not have someone send me pictures. Um, this is me when I was in high school, and uh, this is my mom's side of the family. So this is my grandma, my grandpa, and a man named Oscar. And all of those people are currently in heaven because they believed in Jesus and what Jesus did for them. So um, they're currently buried here on this earth. Their body has probably started um, turning into dust, but they're with God rejoicing in heaven. And I'm excited because one day I'll get to see them again. It's sad that I don't get to see them here on this earth anymore. And I think about them every once in a while and I can be sad. But I can rejoice that I will get to see them in heaven and praise God with them because they also believed in Jesus Christ as their Savior. And we talked about that punishment Adam and Eve received, but also that God promised a Savior. And we're going to focus on Jesus and his suffering, his death, and his resurrection in the upcoming uh, couple of weeks so that we can also have the hope that um, my grandparents and uh, their best friend, that they have, that they have because they're still alive and in heaven, and I'll get to celebrate with them one day, and you'll get to celebrate with them too if we believe that Jesus came and died to take away those sins. So that idea, once again, that we were separated from God, but Jesus brings us back so we can have a relationship with him and be in heaven with him and with all of the other believers. We have a couple of prayer requests this week. Um, Rose, Cam, and Allie would like to uh, pray for their puppy um, that is um, undergoing surgery and then the travel to um, take care of the puppy. Annabelle and Aunt Annalise would like to pray for the safety for all of the snow that's been happening. April and Luke would like to pray for their grandpa that he can get out of rehab and be healthy again. AJ would like to pray for um, forgiveness, specifically thank you for uh, those things that we do wrong, but we know God forgives us for uh, when we repent. Kaylee and Abby and Gary would like to pray that um, Kaylee gets better and continues to stay better. Ian, Elsie, and Aiden would like to um, thank God for, um, let's see, for the snow that we got for um, their sister. Um, Elsie, and also for Aiden because they love to hold him. Uh, one of our other friends would like to pray for the roads and that the roads stay good. And Rachel and Hannah would like to pray that um, gas doesn't cause us uh, so much distress. Pray for great grandparents who um, need to undergo some more surgery and also for grandparents who will be traveling this weekend. So we can fold our hands and say, Dear Jesus, thank you for all the wonderful gifts and blessings you give us. Thank you for being our Savior. Please help us to remember to focus uh, on your suffering and ultimately what you did to bring us back from exile, to bring us back to you. Uh, help us to remember that even though um, sad things will happen to us, to remember that we can hope in you and also be in heaven uh, rejoicing with all believers one day. Please help everyone who needs uh, surgeries or recovering, all uh, puppies and grandparents and great-grandparents, um, and anyone who is sick, please help them to uh, be well and receive the care that they need. Please help um, everyone who is driving on the roads um, and uh, who is uh, needing to be safe, whether from snow, power outages, water. Um, please help people secure the things that they need so they can be safe. Um, please uh, help anyone who may be traveling to keep them safe. Um, thank you for wonderful gifts like snow and sisters and babies, and especially for your forgiveness. Um, please help us to always remember to forgive others just as you have forgiven us. In Jesus' holy name, I pray. Amen.